Hey, so today I'm going to talk to you all about diagnosing leaks, in particularly a transmission leak. Uh, what I have is a 2006 Ram 2500 with a 5.9 diesel and a 48RE automatic transmission. Now looking at this this leak, it's leaking quite a bit. I mean, just sitting for a little bit, it's it's kind of puked a bit of fluid out. You can see that initially probably this would be diagnosed as a transmission pan. Now on this side of the pan, it is pretty sweated. Uh, sweating indicating that a little bit of fluid is getting around the plastic gasket right there, but it's not that wet. Now we go to the driver's side or the left side of the transmission and it is really wet. Now one of the things that you want to do when you're looking for a leak is you want to go as far forward and as high as you possibly can. Now if we go a little bit higher up and I'll try to do this to where you all can see, it's pretty dry. Now there's a little bit of kind of dried up dirt fluid. That's probably fluid that spit out of the vent. More than likely there's a trans service and a little bit of fluid came out or it was a little bit overfilled, but that's not actively leaking. What we do have actively leaking on this transmission, and it's kind of unique, is my neutral safety switch or range switch. It's, it's kind of two functions on this. Now, this is leaking to where if I pull off the electrical connector, you can actually see fluid coming out of it. Now, this happens quite a bit on pressurized sensors. Now, the transmission, you know, is going to have hydraulic pressure anywhere from 150 upwards of 350 PSI. And you can see a fair amount of transmission fluid is actually coming out of the electrical connector. So anytime we have a pressurized device, such as a transmission or power steering or uh, engine for that matter, you can have these plastic sensors fail internally and actually start to leak out fluid. Now the downside is, is it starts to fill the electrical connector cavity with fluid and then that can go up the insulation because the insulation is sealed around the end of this connector and that can actually pump hydraulic fluid, in this case transmission fluid, up into the harness. This truck is having some lack of power issues and one of the things I found was that there is hydraulic fluid throughout this uh, connector. So I'm going to do my best to clean it out. That's usually going to result in using some contact cleaner and then letting it drain for a little bit. Uh, but the risk is, is I will have to go through and uh, probably run an overlay harness or a jumper harness uh, for the three wires that are in here. Because there's only three, even though it is a uh, six wire capacity connector. I also will have to go through and replace the range switch. So what we'll do is I'm going to do uh, replace the pan gasket as well and because it is slightly seeping on one side, uh, replace the range switch and then also go through and put a new filter on it. While I got the pan and the hardware and the hot tank cleaning up, there's a couple things I wanted to do uh, in, in between while it's uh, baking in there. Replace the filter. The fluid on this is pretty nasty, so I'm glad we are changing the fluid and filter on this. Uh, the pan gasket itself uh, was pretty flat. It is a uh, plastic with rubber impregnated gasket, and these do get worn out over time. Uh, they technically can be reused, but that's a, you know, technicality. Uh, it's a good idea to replace these every time. I have a new gasket for the pan. I typically don't like using pan gaskets, but in this case, this is what the factory calls for. The flange that on the case of the transmission as well as the transmission pan are designed for it, so it's a good idea. Uh, what you do not want to do is do not put silicone on this. Let the gasket do its job. The new gasket is going to be plenty fine uh, to reseal that. It does not need any additional help. If it needs additional help, that's because of some issues with the case itself and that's going to be a uh, cause for you might want to look at uh, possibly replacing the case if that's if that's the issue. If this was silicone you want to get all of the silicone cleaned off and you want a nice even uh, pan flange. Now this being aluminum you want to make sure that you are not using any metal razor blades or anything like that. Use a plastic razor blade, uh, plastic brushes and clean it all off and make sure that it's nice and dry and ready to go. With this, we will have to torque the pan up kind of evenly so that it smashes the uh, new gasket 
and it doesn't collapse it at all. So you can see the new gaskets kind of got raised uh, edges on it. Uh, that is gonna be really important that we, we collapse that down evenly. Now we already went through and replaced the neutral safety switch. The reason why I like to do that now is I can see to make sure that the neutral safety switch is engaged where it needs to be on the, uh, on the uh, shifter on the manual valve right there. I've also gone through and I'm in the process of cleaning out the connector. Now this is a process where you use contact cleaner and uh, I use a little rubber tipped air nozzle uh, to go through and clean it out the best you can. Why this can be an issue is that oil or in this case automatic transmission fluid can get into the harness and that can build up resistance on the circuit and cause issues in the case of this truck uh, there is an issue with it having a lack of throttle input now it's a diesel so there's no actual throttle valve uh, it's just asking for more fuel but it does look at the transmission uh, what gear it's in and the speed sensors that we have to allow for the correct amount of fuel to go uh, into the combustion chamber. So I'm hoping that I can clean this out enough to where I can get that out. Again, as I stated before, uh, engine oil pressure sensors can do this as well as power steering pressure sensors. Uh, those both I've had to where uh, power steering pressure sensors gone through, hydraulic pressure's gone through and the fluid's gone all the way up into the PCM and the harness was effectively uh, a goner. I don't think that's the case with this one. I hope I can clean it out. I'm gonna do a couple more uh, passes with contact cleaner and compressed air and hopefully that will take care of it. You can see on the old one here, you can see just how much oil is inside of that connector. Uh, there's a fair amount that is coming out of this uh, and that does mean that this is a goner. Now the other thing to take note of is that this does have a ceiling ring. Uh, anytime there's an O-ring, you wanna make sure that uh, that journal that it rides in is okay. The new one comes with a new O-ring already pre-installed. So just pre-lubricating it and then torquing this down and making sure that it's engaged is all you really need to do for that neutral safety switch. So let me go get the pan out of the uh, hot tank and I'll get it all torqued up and ready to go. Transmission pan's clean, new gaskets down, pan gaskets torqued. I like to uh, um, gun them on really lightly, let it sit for a second, and then go around the perimeter and torque them. The torque for these transmission pan uh, bolts is 125 inch pounds. So I went through, that's all ready to go. Connector's back plugged in, it's as cleaned out as I can get it. Uh, lower the truck down and I'll put ATF plus four in it and I'll be able to drive it. Uh, hopefully there will not be any more leaks, but I'll check it after I do a really extensive test drive. So if you made it through the end of the video, appreciate you watching to the end and I will see you in the next one.